This week we've been uh, following the controversy in South Africa between the South Africans and the Indians. And it's my pleasure to welcome Richie Benno to the studio with me. Richie, firstly, welcome. Secondly, a statement made overnight that I think was very significant, and that came from Sean Pollock. And he said that uh, he doesn't support moves by the United Cricket Board of South Africa to have the match reinstated as a test. Where's this heading? Well, first of all, we're finding out a lot more about uh, things that have gone on that haven't uh, been publicised. For example, Sean Pollock has said that, and he's also added that the players, the South African players, weren't consulted in uh, any moves to have uh, the match played and declared as a test match. So that is new. It's very interesting that the South African captain should be saying uh, what he did. And there are two other things have happened, two other bits of information that have come out. One is that uh, whereas we were told and assured that Mike Dennis had made all those penalty decisions on his own, now turns out that the only one he made on his own, which is the one he should have made, that's from the television footage of Tendulkar and the alleged ball tampering, and uh, all the others were referred, the uh, matters of play behaviour, bad play behaviour on the field, were referred by the umpires to the match referee, as they should have been. Just before we go on any further that, let's just uh, catch up on the latest that uh, we've heard out of South Africa. Here's Andrew McKinlay. India's threatened boycott did not eventuate, but the tourist lineup was without the suspended Verinda Sawag and skipper Sarav Ganguly. He's sitting out the match due to back and shoulder spasms. Sent into bat by Sean Pollock, India's debut opener Connor Williams copped an early barrage before falling to Lance Klusner for just five. Left on the pads here, and the finger goes up. India crawled to lunch at one for 44. The scoring rate improved in the second session, but it came at a cost. Oh, it's a good shot. Good shout. Yes, good enough for the decision. The tourists slumped to five for 107. Dask on for a dog at 46 before South Africa claimed the prize scalps of Sachin Tendulkar for 27 and VVS Laxman for 14. This time straight to Gully. India's tail showed plenty of resolve. Deepdas Gupta and Anil Kumble adding 51 for the sixth wicket. Das Gupta eventually fell for 36. India finishing the day at 8 for 221. Nanny Hayward taking 3 for 70. He's bowled him with another slow delivery. That's gone through the defence. Meanwhile, the off-field wrangling continues. India's cricket board president Jag Mahadal Mir confirming he plans to end the communication standoff with the ICC. Let the dust settle within a day or two. We will be discussing with the ICC. We will be writing to ICC. We'll be able to find out a solution which is acceptable to all the parties. The Indian board remains hopeful the match will be reinstated as an official test. I have already said yesterday that as far as India, Indian board and the South African board are concerned, uh, we have gone through the details and we feel that this satisfies the, all the parameters. And already said yesterday that it will be an official test match. Well, it won't be officially recognised either in terms of countries' records or players' records. There won't be Test Match Championship points awarded. Uh, the, suspended uh, the suspended sentence and the suspension of the Indian players won't uh, uh, be counted for this match. The player will still be su suspended. Uh, and uh, you'll have other ramifications down, down the track. Yes, uh, Malcolm Gray speaking there. Just a quick check of the score where it is after day one. Eight for 221. The third test match of this series, meant to be the third test match. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of wrangling going on whether it, it actually is or it isn't. Richie, from those statements we've just heard, we're, at least we're going to get some communication and probably some resolve in the end of it? Oh, yes, I think so. It uh, turns out there's another little bit of information that's come out in a small story. Bronwyn Wilkinson, the uh, uh, spokesman or spokesperson for the uh, South African board, has been in communication with Malcolm Gray and Malcolm Speed. They might have been in communication with Mr Delmere, but uh, South Africa have certainly been in communication with the ICC and at some length. Now, uh, one other thing that's come out, apart from uh, the uh, new things, the facts about the... Uh, 
uh, Dinesh uh, referral from the umpires to the match referee uh, is that um, the uh, South African government came into it as well as the Indian government. First of all, India reminded South Africa that they were going to lose 8 million rond if they didn't play the match and if this wasn't a test match. And then the Indian government was called in and they talked to the South African government who then issued instructions to the players and that's why you've got in that Sean Pollock thing the statement the players were not consulted. Mm. They were just instructed. Talking of that consultation, uh, we, we know that the, the right manner has been followed in reporting the fielding side. Do you think the England, Indians are looking back to, say, the Michael Slater incident? And that's what's really riling them. Are they making a comparison, saying, why us? How come not him? Well, everyone, not just uh, the Indians, uh, have the chance to complain about uh, ICC match referees in the past because they've been as weak as washing up order. And uh, it's all come to a head with the Michael Slater incident, and that was the stroke that was played. Slater came in to, to uh, try to take the catch, the ball clearly bounced. And uh, then Cammy Smith, this was in the time where the ICC referees were absolutely weak. Cammy Smith said, cool it when this behaviour, which is one of the more unpleasant things I've ever seen on a cricket field, Michael Slater, umpire Venkat and Raul Dravid, and uh, certainly one of the more unpleasant things I've seen, and all Cammy Smith said was, cool it. Now, every other nation at that point said, oh, hang on a minute, if he's not going to be penalised for that, why should anyone else in the world be penalised, uh, ranging from schools through to the Test Match Arena? And then the ICC stepped in and they had their meeting in Kuala Lumpur recently and that Slater incident there with Venkat and, uh, and Raul Dravid was the catalyst for bringing in stringent and uh, uh, much more restrictive penalties on players' behaviour on the field. They issued a statement after the Kuala Lumpur meeting saying the match referees and the umpires will be told to get tough and to stop this sort of behaviour and that is precisely what's happened. You've got to remember that uh, the ICC consists of the 10 test match playing countries. So everyone, including India, South Africa, Australia and all the others, voted for all these stringent penalties. OK, we're, we're, I suppose looking at the dark side a little bit, let's look on the bright side. South Africa, uh, December 1, they leave to come out here.